first thing is you can't have a cable cross system without some cables. So that's what I'm doing right now, making cables for the system. I've done some work with wire rope before, pardon the sun, it's just crazy, I'm in the sunroom there, I don't know is that any better. I've done some work with wire rope before, but a lot of this is new. This is one end of one of my cables, and so the idea is that you can hook things up to it like a carabiner, and then hook up your gym accessories and things like that. So. Um, this is what a finished end of it looks like. I'll go ahead and do the other end and I'll show you the steps that I do to get it done. Okay, first off, let's start with the cable itself. This is 3 16 inch uh, plastic coated wire rope. And I bought this stuff from a place called, I think, E-Rigging Supply. So just do internet searches, find a good supplier for it. It was actually not that expensive if I bought a lot of it. And the shipping was kind of expensive. The shipping cost like half as much as the cable itself. But I got a giant roll of it because as I do this, I don't know necessarily what lengths of this stuff I want. And I think by trial and error, I'm gonna discover that I want certain lengths and not others. Now, the nice thing about coated cable is that when you cut it, it doesn't splay out. So let me show you what I mean there. So if this cable was not coated, when you cut it, then the ends can have a, a chance to sort of fray outward and then you can't really complete your project. You need a clean end to work with. Because there's a plastic coating around the outside of it, you can cut this with just regular bolt cutters. So these are just some inexpensive bolt cutters from Harbor Freight. Now, if you didn't have coated cable, then you'd have to use something specifically for cutting wire rope that sort of pinches it and keeps the strands from going out. And that is my other tool here. This is my swaging tool and it's got a couple of places where I can cut cable and the idea is that when you cut it then then the ends of the cable don't fray. So these are two tools. This one's relatively inexpensive just a pair of bolt cutters. I got it from Harbor Freight. This one's actually very expensive. It's from a company called Arm A-R-M and there are less expensive swaging tools and I think this is just one of those things where if you go with a cheap one you're really going to be sorry. You will pay for it in frustration and wasted materials and just general bad time. This is kind of the industry standard for what's considered an inexpensive hand swaging tool, but by inexpensive, that's relative. This thing is over $100. I think I paid $125 or $130 for it. So it's expensive, but again, it's the ARM HSC 600. I really don't recommend getting one that's less expensive than this if you're gonna do this project. So uh, maybe get together with some friends or something, but. Um, but this is this is what I would recommend to be the minimum. If you want to try this with some inexpensive swaging tools from Home Depot or something, you're welcome to try it. They sell some that I think are $35 or so, and I think you'll really regret it over time. So, bolt cutters to just cut the cable, or you can use the cable cutters here, but you have to strip the wire in order to cut it to let it fit in here, and then a swaging tool. So bolt cutters, swaging tool, those are the two big tools that you'll need for this. So you'll notice that I'm using the term swaging. What we're gonna do is put the cable through here twice and then smush it down and then that'll hold the cable securely. The only way to secure cable is either to swage it with something like this or I guess if you wanted to, you could weld it. But the other way would be to use some type of fitting like this where you put the cable in and then you tighten these nuts. The trouble is this would scratch you, right? So it's not smooth. This isn't what we really want here. What I want is something that's not gonna be uncomfortable or scratch a person when they're using the unit. And so what we're gonna do is swage it. And here, I've swaged this end and then put some shrink wrap on it so it's got a little plastic coating. The very first one I did, before I was shrink wrapping it, you can see this is the crimped swage here that's on the end of this. I mean, it's not sharp or anything. Um, I like the idea of putting some shrink wrap on it. So uh, how do we get it to look like this so that we've got an end that you can hook things onto? Well, it starts with having to strip off the plastic coating. So I've got plastic coating on this because bare wire rope is a kind of, you know, can cut you sort of like a saw if you let it go and it was ripping. So the plastic coating just is smoother. But the thing is, you can't do any of these things like swage with this plastic coating on it. So I need to strip off some of the plastic coating. So I want to strip off a little more than six and a half inches, maybe six and five eighths inches, something like that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and measure and then mark this thing so I can cut it. So there we go. So it's marked now. 
I'm going to take a utility knife and kind of cut all the way around this. The utility knife will cut through the plastic, but it is not sharp enough or strong enough to cut through the wire rope. The wire rope's just way tougher. Uh, this wire rope is like aircraft grade, and I don't know, it holds, I think the, uh, like the live load capability of it is three or four thousand pounds or something, and then I think it, like a standing load limit, is up to 700 pounds or something like that. Um, but it's a lot, whatever it is. So, once I've got that cut, then I need to strip it off. And this obviously dulls your utility knife very quickly. <laughs> Okay, and let's see if I can pull this off now. Wait, there we go. All right, so I've got nothing but bare metal here and then this is what I'm going to work with. Um, this end I want it to be as clean as possible. First thing I'm going to do is uh, put a couple of golf balls on here. What am I doing that for? These are going to serve as cable stops. Now I bought some actual cable stops here uh, off of Amazon but they're expensive like three or four bucks each even if you buy them four at a time. So I'm just using old golf balls that I'm, I'm not going to use for anything else just cheap ones I got. So I'm going to put two of them on here Now this is the part, oh, and I'm also going to put on this shrink wrap, uh, and it is from this assortment of shrink wrap tubing from Harbor Freight. It's the half inch diameter, so I'm going to put this thing, just put this on here so it'll be on when I finish all this other stuff. This is where you really need to have a very clean end on the end of this, or else the stuff you're going to do isn't going to work out. So now, this is, this has very small holes, it will barely fit over the end of this wire rope. So I want to see if I can get it through here. Come on wire rope. I might have gotten it. There we go. Okay so once I have it through once I want to push this all the way to the end and then curve it and see if I can push it through again. So the way I do that is I kind of put the cable here and then push this fitting onto the wire rope. I can see it's already starting to splay that's a problem. If it gets to a certain point, I can't use this end. Mostly going through, but you're just going to have to really use your skills of manual dexterity here. I've got all but like one little strand that's cooperating. And that might be enough that I can't use this end. So you just have to do what you can here. All right, so this is on. And you don't want to push it all the way through, you just want it to barely be started because now you have to put this guy in here. And if you push it through too much, you can't get him in there. Alright, he's in now. Alright, so with any luck I can push this thing through until I can see the end here on the other side. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get in close enough to demonstrate that to you. Alright, so. Um, I hope you can see that it's kind of you can see the very ends of it right there now we have to swage it swaging means smushing this aluminum and you smush it so hard it actually becomes infused with the strands of the cable so like the, sh the swaging actually mushes the aluminum into kind of the little recesses in the strands of the cable so I'm going to grab my swaging tool here this is kind of kind of works best when you can push it against something Put my swaging tool here and then you can kind of adjust it for a while and it, you know and it doesn't actually smush down on the cable until a certain point so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this so that my tool is on the little swage ferrule and then push this make sure this is pushed through it is okay so now once this is pushed through I'm gonna smush time for the smushing Okay, and once you got the first swage in there, then that thing's mostly good to go. All right, so I would like to have it sticking, you know, through a little bit more, but it's it's fine. And so now, once I've got one swage in there, I just make two more. 
And away we go. Swage number two. All right, so we've got that done now. And then you can see I've got kind of the ends of it done and then I want to swage right in the middle. Swage number three. All right, and then one more on a ferrule this side. You kind of do it as many times as you can, as many as will fit on the fitting. So the way I go here, bring this thing in. All right, and yeah, that's good. Boom, okay, so this would be enough, but then there's one last step that I kind of like because again, this isn't really, you know, abrasive or anything. It's not gonna harm you in any way, but it feels rough, it's, it's rough feeling. So what I wanna do is cover it with some rubber or plastic. That's where this shrink wrap tubing comes in. This was Harbor Freight, very inexpensive. You get an assortment of it. Uh, and then the largest one will fit over after you swage it. It won't fit over until you swage it though. So, all right, so I've got this thing on there. It's covering up all the ends. Let's go over to my shrink wrap gun. My heat gun is right over here. I don't do this, uh, it'll be awkward, but here, so there's the, the cable and away we go. So that kind of takes care of, um, you know, any feeling of comfort. It's just a plastic coating now on here. And then the golf ball service stoppers. I bought the genuine stoppers, but the golf balls are exactly the same size. So again, I'm just using old golf balls that I'm not going to have another purpose for. And there we go. We've got a cable end. So how does this work? Let's see. So this is kind of too long for this purpose. I'll be using this cable for uh, probably the cable cross when I incorporate both of the, the um, uh, cages. But here, let me show you, just to show you this works. So here, for instance, um, you know, you can just do tricep extensions. You can see how it works. I've got weight going up and down over there. Cable system up top. I think you can see it all. But yeah, I'll be discussing the construction of the cable cross system in a little bit, but this was just a video to show you how I'm putting together cables for it, so in case you had to replace a cable on your current system or were curious about that part of it, that's what this is for. So that's it. Total cost of that entire cable is less than a buck. Probably the most expensive part of it is the golf ball, so try and find a really cheap source for some crappy golf balls to use as the cable stops on the end. Or you can just do it without cable stops. I mean, it's up to you. Uh, I kind of like having them on the end, but I mean, they're not that really important. And you can see for the purpose that I've got here until I get both cages going, that cable is just way too long. But uh, again, that's why I wanted to be able to make these things myself. So it's inexpensive to screw up. And I'll know that if I want it for this setup, next time I gotta make it about a foot or two shorter. Um, other than that, yeah, it's going well. The video on the cable cross system itself, not just the cable, not just how to build cables, but the cable cross system with the pulleys and everything, that's going to be coming up in a little bit. But I didn't want to make the video just gigantic and include everything in it, so I figured uh, I would do the um, uh, how to make a cable as a separate video. So this is it. I mean, it's really buttoned up. I don't feel bad about this thing at all. I think it's it's perfect. So it works great as a cable. There are different ends you can put on it, but I'm just familiar with using these um, these things. Uh, they're called, uh, what are they called? Thimbles. So I'm, I'm familiar with using thimbles and, and carabiners are cheap. This whole thing's been an education in just about everything. Carabiners, they don't all fit. They don't all work for every purpose. But a lot of it's coming together really well, like the golf ball part was really kind of a neat revelation when I figured out that would work for a cable stop. So that's how to make a cable if you need to replace one or you're going to do a cable cross system like the one that I'm going to do. Waiting on things to arrive, they're being shipped, and also waiting on one more sale from Titan Fitness. We'll see. I've got some things I want to buy from them, but I never like to pay full price for Titan because there's always a 10% off sale right around the corner. So everybody, have a great workout. We'll see you soon.